right, here we are. Super 32 going on right behind us. Quarters just ended. Quarters just ended. What do you think? I loved it. My, uh, my, uh, my wrestler, Chris Folka, just won in the quarters. Uh, he's going to the semis. He's wrestling Garrett Nijenhouse, who also won in the quarters at 182. Winner of that gets will probably get Abe in the finals. What, so. What's it take to be a Super 32 finalist? A lot of hard work, dedication, you know, good coaching, good, uh, good, good team teammates, and um, a desire to win. Tell me about Red Nose Wrestling. You know, we're in Creskill, New Jersey. I have a bunch of good kids. It's like a family. Good, good, good parents. We have good coaches, and um, we go, you know, four out of five days a week. Uh, go to pretty much every tournament, and we have a good time doing what we do. Nice. Um, but let's say, let's say, give me some advice. I'm, I want to start my own club. What are the, what are the, the first three things that uh, I need to have, put energy and focus on? Um, I would I would start with the young kids and and develop confidence with them early. Uh -huh. Travel with them. Let them know you care. You know, let them understand that it's about a marathon and not about the immediate win. Nowadays, you got a lot of coaches teaching to win, to win, to win, cutting weight big time. You know, a lot of human growth, holding kids back. I think it's a bad idea. Effort, position, fearless attack, respect, and a longevity, consistency with everything you teach is very important with the kids. And um, I think loyalty has a lot to do with it. I mean, you got to get the kids that want to buy into your program um, so that they can reciprocate back to the kids that are starting out and the program will feed and grow over time. You're not going to do great in the beginning. You're going to take some lumps and nobody's going to know you, but over time you develop champions. Coaching wrestling, to be effective, it's a lot of energy, a lot of time. Why, uh, why do you choose to take this path? This is my passion. I have four children um, and I figured the best way for me to keep them on a good track was to develop their friends around them and have them help me build my kids. I'm not the dad who's a psychopath. I build wrestlers around my kids and have them help me develop my own kids. And it just grew and grew and grew. And over time, we have a very good thing going at Red Nose Wrestling School. We, we took second in a big tournament the other uh, couple weeks ago. We lost to a recruited team in the finals and it was my homegrown team that went. And it was like national level tournament. So I'll take that all day because they give me something to work with. Let's take the coaching hat off and talk about being a, a parent in a sport like wrestling. What's it What's it like for you, you know, wrestlers sometimes, you, what's it like if you see your, your son or daughter physically get beat or, and, or taking that mental anguish after a loss? Uh, what's that feel like to you? I sucked at it in the beginning because I was a wrestler and I thought about it as a wrestler. But as a parent, you have to learn to separate yourself as a coach. That's why most coaches, most coaches believe, and I believe, you shouldn't coach your own kids. And I, I actually believe that. I learned over time not to make a lot of mistakes I made early on. You know, you got to start to think about the wrestler, not about the person. Remove myself as a parent and look at it from a perspective of how do they feel, what, what do we need to improve on. And I think over time, my, my mentality that I, I teach the kids, effort, position, fearless attack, will develop a wrestler over time. And I made my kids buy into that as well by just not being a psychopath when things don't go our way. You know, from injury to, you know, not taking a shot or maybe even getting tired in a match, we just worked on building that over time. And, you know, I did that with all my wrestlers, not just my kids. That's a key ingredient. But as a parent, I just think you shouldn't really coach your own kid. That's what, uh, what is the appropriate, or is there one response to taking a lot? I feel like wrestlers feel like they have to be up, they have to be so angry, they have to be so upset if they lose. No, I think, I, I, I tell my parents and my kids all the time, don't go into a match angry, go into a match focused. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a good warm up is very important, and having the right people in your corner, that car ride to a tournament, and that car ride after a tournament, the anticipation kids will have with their parents in the car is vital to their success on the mat. So I tell my parents, let me be the bad guy. We'll go over position. So when things don't go the way in a match or things do go away in a match, let's say you're down 14-1 and you get pin and you pin the kid, you were down 14-1. We got to work on that. Yeah, you know, great yeah. job. You, you won. Congratulations. High five. But now we have something to fix. And if they don't give me their effort and their position and attack fearlessly, they don't give me anything to work with, win or lose. If they do, win or lose, we have things to work on, which is the key. It's, over, it's a marathon. And it takes time to build. Nice. Where can people... Uh Find information on the club. Just rednosewrestling.com. My name is Mike Folka. My son is Chris Folka. I got a daughter, Alexi Folka. She just took fourth in the nationals last year at Campbellsville University as a true freshman, nice. and they won the title. Uh, my oldest kid, Mike, he's wrestling at Centenary in New Jersey, so we're all local, and um, we're, we, we go everywhere all year round. People know who I am. People find me everywhere, but rednosewrestling.com is the easiest way. My cell phone's on the website. Nice. So well, I appreciate your time. Thanks for putting your energy into wrestling. You got anything else for us? No, just keep doing what you're doing. You guys are great.